Okay, now let's discuss the current situation with the FAI. Mark Ty from the Sunday Times and Dylan McDonald from the Independent join me now. Uh, guys, the fallout was continuing for, for, for John Delaney's resignation on Saturday night, but, you know, what's thinking of the timing behind it? Yeah, well, I, I think it's an intriguing uh, timing, you know, the, that it went out on a Saturday night and also the timing that it, this has come before all these reports are due, the Mazars report, the COSI report from Sport Ireland. Um, my information is that there was commercial pressure on the FAI to get this done now, both from sponsors, uh, UEFA and even, you know, the Bank of Ireland, who are um, the, the biggest bank, biggest backer for the FAI. So, uh, again, why it happened so late on Saturday, I think. Yeah, is, is I mean, as, as Mark would know well, you know, a lot of things have happened late on a Saturday night over the last sort of five months or so. There are people involved, there were sort of in a knowledge of the talks who, who would claim that this was all very natural, that the talks, which had stalled and had resumed, um, you know, in recent weeks about John Delaney's future, um, that it, it was just a case that it went through the night on Friday, could have been settled on Friday, went into Saturday, and that was the timing of it. But in terms of, uh, when you consider the number of statements and the number of things that have happened with regard to the FAI, uh, a very terse two-paragraph statement, 11.15 p.m. on a Saturday night, I think you also know what an awareness of communications and how things work that this is, this is, it's, it's burying it to a degree, although, I mean, a story of that magnitude was never going to be buried, um, but it maybe caught some people on the hop in terms of Sunday paper coverage, but they would claim that that was just how the talks panned out and may, maybe that was the case. And Mark, you mentioned that first report, that's due out on, on the 7th of October. Is there any chance um, they got wind of what's in it, they know what's coming down the line, they thought let's, let's get them out now before this comes at us? That, that could have been a calculation. I don't think they actually know. They can't know what's in the COSI, the, the Sport Ireland report, the, my information. Um, so maybe there's a calculation that they want the deal done before that happens, you know, that John Delaney is no, no longer an employee. And from John Delaney's perspective, you know, um, he had to agree to this clearly. You know, he, the deal that he accepted is in and around the 400,000 mark, uh, was my understanding. Um, there is conflicting kind yeah, of uh, numbers. We have a solid figure on that, you know, so it, 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 it seems to be in that ballpark. But from all FAI sources are saying it's significantly less than what he would have sought in terms of the 2 million euro golden handcuffs deal and yeah. getting that full payment that, you know, the FAI feared if this went to the high court, it would cost him 3 million. So the calculation was very much let's get the deal done, put this to him, if he accepts that, we'll, 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 instead of having to go down a route of dismissing him and fighting that, if he fought that, they think that's an unfair dismissal, that would have been a very costly matter for them to, to, to have to fight in the High Court, where the fees escalate every day, you know? How does this go down with the likes of FAI staff, people who are saying that the, the organisation is, is struggling financially, but he's, he's still getting what is a, a large amount of money? Yeah, look, it, it's... It it is stomach churning and I think it's it's hard for people to take having you know heard so much and read so much in the past five six months or maybe over a longer period of time about the operations of the FAI and I mean it has been a decade of austerity for Irish football it's it's been a, a very tough time for employees in the FAI at a very low level morale has been rock bottom they've had to listen to stories over the last couple of months valid stories about the fear of of people potentially losing their jobs or or some kind of austerity measures as a consequence of this of this crisis basically um, how it's sold to them and as Mark alluded to there is that this was sort of a mathematical equation and that um, as hard as it is to take that there could be a payout in this situation it would appear that there was an impasse there in discussions that um, it, it would have been hard to resolve it without this happening. And as Mark mentioned, that could have made the bill even bigger and put the FAI in an, on an even more delicate financial footing than it is right now. I know everyone want, you know, there was a sense that a lot of people in FAI wanted some big announcement that someone had been shown the door in, in some dramatic way, but that didn't appear to be realistic. And this was the, the conclusion that was required to try and move on to some degree, as much as you can move on from something that's, you know, that's that's ruined the game here, you know, and certainly left it in a, in a pretty difficult position going forward in terms of financing itself. Um, I think it's about half a million worth of, of public funding has, has already been withheld by Sport Ireland. Will this resignation be enough for them to, to, re, to reinstate that money? 
Uh, no, I think there's more to go. Um, I, think that, that's, I think that's probably been established by commentary that's come out from Shane Ross and, and I guess other people on the Oireachtas Committee and so on. I think it's natural now that uh, that, that pro probably helps to some degree of closure. But I mean, there is the issue there of Donald Conway, the president of the FBI. I think his position remains a talking point. He was on the board for, you know, for 14, 15 years, while you know, a lot of things were, were, were sanctioned, approved, uh, including you know, the contract for John Delaney, which has ultimately proved a sticking point in these negotiations, at, which has led to more money being paid out. So um, I think the comments are clear that uh, for state funding to be restored, there's more steps required. These audits are a part of it. The reports are a part of it. Um, there have been some governance reforms passed, which were a part of it. But I think there are ties that remain with the, I guess, the old regime, as, as, if that's the right way to phrase it. And I think that those ties are going to have to be cut, really, uh, before that funding is restored. Um, Mark, do you think that this is something that Donald Conway and other board members have given thought about, that maybe their time in the fold is, is coming to an end as well? Yeah, I, I, I think this will come to a head later this year um, when th these reports are finalised, you know, and um, it, it's clear Shane Ross, you know, who, who really has so much control as sports minister over Sport Ireland's funding of the FAI, Will not count on, will, will not accept payments to the FAI while Don Conway is still there. He's made it a personal issue. Obviously, FIFA and UEFA have objected to that very strongly and said, you know, you're, you risk having um, the FAI banned from international comp international competition. But I've, I've, I'm getting a very strong sense that there's a groundswell of um, acceptance in the FAI from certain a cohort that. Conway would have to fall on the sword for, for, for state funding to be restored. And clearly, you know, if, if the FI has to move on from Delaney, the Delaney regime, they need the state to be funding it. Like, we have this ridiculous situation in Ireland where we put more money into the Greyhound board. And, you know, Shane Ross saying he doesn't want that money going into the Greyhound board, you know, mm. 14, 15 million euro a year. And we give 2.9 million euro to the biggest uh, sport in Ireland, you know, in terms of participation. You know, so if, if the FI really do this properly, I think it's a great chance for them to get the state on board and, and to back Irish football you know, to a greater extent than it had been under the, the Delaney regime. Um, I'm just looking at the, we have the Irish Independent um, page for tomorrow. Clonus Town insists they have no appetite to rename John Delaney Park. Park. He still has support out there, doesn't he? Yeah, the, he, he still does. I mean, they exist. There are people out there who, um, you know, who, who would look on it as, a, as an era of progress. I mean, they're very entitled to, to hold those views. I mean, I, I, I do find it extraordinary as, like one of the achievements that is often mentioned is the, that the Aviva Stadium was secured during his, his tenure. Like as it stands, you know, debt from the Aviva Stadium is going to hang over Irish football for the next two decades. And I think the most extraordinary thing, or one of the most extraordinary things about the Delaney era is somehow how it became, this perception existed that he was the only person that could make these deals happen, that could secure these sponsorship deals. As Mark mentioned, like it's the biggest participation sport in the country. Mm. Uh, when the football team goes well, I think it, it grabs the nation in a way that many other teams don't. And that will be attractive to sponsors. And it doesn't rely on one man to make that happen. Like that, that has become a thing. I mean, that's part of the the cult of Delaney that has grown and you know, you know, funds went around the country. I mean, those funds were state funds. They weren't actually coming from uh, you know, the FEI's pocket either. So that's an important yeah. thing to mention. And, and the FEI is one aspect, but he is still uh, a member of the UEFA Executive Committee. Where is that going to go now? What's the story with that? Well, I, I've no insight from the UEFA side of things, but I've, I've read the reports that UEFA will be fo following kind of the same road of, 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 as the FEI, seeking Delaney's exit from their executive committee. Like, this is, um, and I think this is why the the board of the FEI were kind of blindsided back in in March when they voted unanimously to, to create this executive vice president role because they said John's connections are so powerful, so so well established with oh, UEFA. Will we miss that? I mean, would we have Euro 2020 games in Dublin if, if John Delaney wasn't there? I don't know. I mean, like last week, North. And Ireland secured the, the Super Cup for 2021, uh, which is like the, a pretty prestigious game. I didn't see any coverage there from Northern Ireland about how this was the work of one person that was there, and if that person wasn't there. Like, you know, the European Under-17 finals came here. They've gone to other small countries all around Europe. This is part of the myth that's been created. Mm. There is no doubt at times you know, it's helpful to have a presence there. Um, but UEFA's like, turnover has increased dramatically over the past you know, 10, 15 years or so. They're, the money they've given out to smaller nations has increased dramatically. This has been credited at times to John Delaney, where actually it's just part of a UEFA strategy generally. So, no, I, I, don't, I don't buy that 
as as a as a as a valid argument. Um, you know, yes, he is there to, like, in theory, as a UEFA representative, he should he's there not to lobby for his own uh, parish. He's there to represent the European it's football. Kind of like the but EU that, commissioner kind of thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he'll do something for us. But that's probably an insight into how the FAI has been governed to a certain degree as well. That it's it's individual interest pulling in different directions rather than a central strategy. So now I, I've always found that argument to be. I think it's a bit misleading. Um, just finally, looking way ahead, are there appropriate candidates to take up the mantle now and bring Irish football to the fore? Well, the first thing we have to see is um, the four independent directors. Like they didn't get a say on this. That's interesting. Again, in the timing. When are they aspect. being appointed? So I'm told within the next two weeks that should happen. There's a, a short list, I think, of around a dozen for these four positions, and that will mean there'll be an independent chairperson of the FEI for the first time. So. It's very important to have someone of a, with a bit of prestige, a bit of business acumen, a, a lot of business acumen, hopefully. Um, and then they'll go right about the process of recruiting the new John Delaney, the new CEO of, of the FAI. Probably not so, a tag that they want to be, <laughs> to, to be given, though. But, yeah, but like we, they've had this since March. We, you know, the FAI has not had a, a full-time CEO and haven't even started that process yet. So it's, it's hugely important to get someone of... So when we see these independent directors, hopefully that'll give an indication of the, the calibre of people that will come in and lend their time to the FAI and hopefully that we can attract a, a really good chief executive you know, with business acumen and we don't have to hide behind our hands you know, with some of the ostentatious stuff that John Delaney was associated yeah. with. Yeah, he doesn't need to be a personality. You know, it doesn't need to be a, a figure, a figure in Irish public yeah. life. Um, like, it's the chief executive of a football association. Uh, there's, there's presidential duties and there's chief executive duties, and it's the chief executive duties um, that caused them problems, ultimately. Right, shall we wait and see? Right.